I think it's time we talk about the future. Well, Lizzie and Darcy are going to talk about the future. It's an episode called Future Talk, but you know what? We'll talk about the future too. How about the future of the Patreon? Actually, genuinely, speaking of the future of the Patreon, someone asked if the Patreon would exist once the Look Back Diaries are over. And yes, the Patreon has existed for years before the Look Back Diaries and will continue to exist beyond the Look Back Diaries. I have done many different projects, shows, works that I've shared exclusively with patrons, and I have plans for more in the future. So come check out all the cool stuff. My name is Ashley Clements, and these are the Look Back Diaries. And since the topic is the future, just some business stuff, while the year-plus journey of writing and filming the Lizzie Bennet Diaries did end, for the most part, with episode 100, there were many aspects of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries that were not over at episode 100, and neither Will the Look Back Diaries be over at episode 100? There are a lot of things to discuss about what happened afterward. Many of you have asked if I will cover the bonus episodes that came out in 2014 that we made to basically promote the novelization. And yes, and I not going to do them on the 10-year anniversary, but I will go somewhat linearly with the events that happened afterward, like the Kickstarter, recording the audiobook, going to the Emmys. So there are more of my memories to share. And speaking of memories, this is the last episode of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries that we shot. We ended the day with Darcy and we did those things in order. So we did 98, the Q&A, 99. And this was the very last episode that we shot. It was very emotional for me. Let's take a look back at it. Oh, he's all alone. He thinks he can do his own little vlog. Yeah, you've seen me do this a lot. Is there a specific topic or... This was your idea. Yeah, see? Very well lit. Very handsome. Very handsome, DVG. Look at you, cutie. Well, as you might surmise from Lizzie's last videos, she and I... Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh. What kind of relationship? No. A friend? Friendship? <laughs> no, it's been six days. I have it in my calendar. It's been a week. We, kissed we definitely we discussed coordinating Navy. these Navy outfits. Yes, but that was in the evening. No one counts it that way, you weirdo. It's cute. It's cute. Yeah. And it has been without a doubt the best week in her life. Oh. My name is William Darcy. And Lizzie Bennett is me. See, he we couldn't see if we were holding hands below frame, so he had to like pull my hand up. That's the kind of stuff we were talking about. And the way that Lizzie looks at him, like so incredibly smitten, I did that on purpose. Acting. I feel like that's one of the things that people have written, like, fan fiction about. Or maybe it's in the book. You, yes, he did. Let's see, then it becomes a funny story later when you're like, oh my gosh, remember how much I hated you? And then we fell in love. When? Yeah, when did you fall in love with me? Tell me the exact moment. We do that all the time as if it happens in a moment. I guess maybe for some people they realize it in a moment, but. Yeah. Oh, a little pride and prejudice for you. When did you discover your true interest in me? Well, I think <laughs> the 
moment I saw the officers at Temperley Digital, you should know. Yes, that is also a Pride and Prejudice reference to the um, estate, the Beverly estate, and the napping pods from Pride and Prejudice. Oh, this is the tie play that I said was like maybe a little too sexual. <laughs> Uh, that's a fun jump cut. Then we were like, we would um, not just continue to make out in front of everybody. Thinking about the future. Well, there's a mood changer. It was wonderful. And he like sits behind me a little bit, so that like I think his arm was around me, so that we would like we are showing a much closer level of intimacy. Then in our other videos where we're like side by side, but not touching. Now we're like overlapping. We're like, hi, we're gross. We're so gross. <laughs> Which terrifies me in no way whatsoever. That's the face of everyone approaching graduation. Oh, no, I can't take that job. No, that would be weird. But that's nice, thanks, but no. Mm. It's very nice, but I must decline. What do you say? But then you'd be my boss. We're doing feminism. <laughs> and also just like very practical, smart choices. It, it would be a bad choice. Because obviously we know the relationship works out, but like don't, don't wanna... immediately start working for somebody you're in a brand new relationship with because um, then what happens if one of those things goes kind of wrong? Well, what do you think you will do when you graduate? <laughs> yeah, funny thing. There's like so many background noises in this episode that I'm like, what was everybody doing? No, I... <laughs> what does that mean? We don't know. We're super vague about it on purpose. Yeah, all the investors watching my vlogs. See, he he's allowed to invest. That would be cute. But, you know, cause, just because he has so much money doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, it's super affordable. <laughs> Okay. My vision of the future includes lots of trips home and visits from Lydia. Really enjoying getting to know my little sister better. Well, we're somewhere in California, so we're only a few hours away. You don't think she's energetic? No, she is, but then again, so is Gigi. It's a while for me to see the similarities. A good point. Anything other than my first impression. Well, and also, like, Gigi almost was Lydia, right? Like, that's kind of the whole point of that. But right now, okay. Oh, yes, we had to have a, a pocket watch. There was a decision made that he was a, a pocket watch person. <laughs> Look at that face. It's so sneaky. This is like the funniest line he has in the whole. We have to go. <laughs> it's so fun that we see this other side of Darcy come out when he and Lizzie are in a relationship. Like it's everything that Fitz and Gigi were talking about, right? That there's there's more to him than that, and and then here. We get to see that, that he is now as comfortable with Lizzie. The other thing that's just like 
an odd juxtaposition, I suppose, is that that episode ends on such a cute, happy note. And I remember when Bernie called cut on the last take. And I don't know, people started to say, like, that's a wrap on Ashley Clements and Daniel Vincent Gord. Like, what I remember is that I just immediately burst into tears and, like, just kind of like fell into Daniel's lap and just just cried because it was over and I loved it so much and it was it was so hard to say goodbye and to know that I didn't I didn't get to keep doing it anymore but like any grieving process there's an awareness that it, the pain is because of how much he loved the thing. Obviously, like I still have episode 100 to talk about, but this was my last episode. And so, yeah, I was, I was kind of a mess and just all wrapped up in my feelings and also Lizzie's feelings because I had been living through them and I didn't want to let them go. I believe it's important for actors to be able to separate their feelings from the feelings of the character and leave the character's feelings behind. But this was a case where like, I didn't want to because I wasn't going to get to step into Lizzie again. So I was just, uh, it was just, it was, oh, it was hard. It was sad. I've closed some long running plays before, but this was still different because while of course you are always discovering new things a play is the same story that you're doing every night the same lines and i had never had the experience of going on this this journey this arc with a character and growing with her and it was so rewarding and there were so many things about the show that were so rewarding and it was just sad that i that I wasn't going to do it anymore. Okay. And just so that I don't throw this into like episode 100, I have promised to be transparent about my pay during the Lizzie Bennett Diaries. And I never told you about the final quarter. So first quarter, I made 250 a month. Second quarter, I made 350 a month. Third quarter, 600. And the Fourth quarter, I made twelve hundred per shoot day, which was, you know, also the pay I got for the full month. But what that means is that for the course of the entire year, if you add up everything that I got paid, I made seventy two hundred dollars for the year in which I made the Lizzie Bennett Diaries, and I got paid more than a lot of other people who worked on the show. But that is also obviously not enough money to live on really anywhere. And I, I said this kind of way back towards the beginning of the series, but one of the things that was very weird and uncomfortable for me at the time was that I felt like the leadership of the show was projecting this idea of success we were in interviews together in which the idea was really being projected that this was a sustainable way to make content, that this content paid for itself and paid everyone making it enough to make it worth doing. And that is kind of like a lot of startup culture, right? There is sort of that like fake it till you make it idea of projecting a certain kind of success until it actually happens. And I felt like I had to project that success as well because it was also very weird to be so recognizable and and so commonly recognized and not be making enough money to live doing the thing that I was recognized for. And I think maybe that's become more common in the last decade with other internet stars, think about TikTokers and just the virality of certain things. But it was not common then, certainly, to be a highly recognized actor and not really be making any money. And there wasn't anybody other than the people on the show with me that I 
knew at least went through something similar. So it was also sort of isolating in that way. I mean, perhaps one of the funniest stories about being recognized is that I woke up one morning and found a roach in my kitchen. <laughs> But I immediately wanted to take action. So I, you know, pulled on some real pants and like, you know, threw on a bra, but may still have actually been wearing my pajama top and just went straight to the store to get roach traps. And I was walking around, I couldn't find them. And an employee saw me and started to come up to offer help. But then she said, are you Lizzie Bennett? And I said, yes, where are the roach traps? Because I have roaches. <laughs> and just being that recognizable while living in a kind of crappy roach infested apartment, it was just a weird, it was a weird time. And it was this kind of like, you know, pioneer thing. The internet did this incredible thing, which was make it possible for people to make things and have an audience for them that wasn't dependent on a, for example, NBC greenlighting them. And that's that's very, very cool. I don't mean to say that it's only worthwhile to do for the money. I did not choose to be an actor because I thought it was going to make me rich. I first set out to be a theater actor, so I really wasn't trying to make money. But the thing that felt so incongruous was projecting this idea of success while not really making any money, while being told that the budget was super, super low, but also getting confusing signals about maybe there being some money. And because I felt like I couldn't be honest, there also was some shame maybe attached to the truth, which I then felt like I had to hide and I'm not hiding it anymore. Shall we take a look at the comments? <laughs> Susie says, he has it in his calendar. Why? asked Fitz, seeing Darcy's timetable. Have you outlined last Monday in little hearts? I did the exact same thing in middle school around the date of my first kiss. <laughs> Which just makes Darcy exactly the same as 13 year old me, which I like. Calo Geo stuff says, excerpt from The Secret Diary of Lizzie Bennet. I met my dad's eyes. He simply glanced from me to Darcy and then asked, so young man, do you like trains? <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Kate. Good work. Diet Dr. Pepper says, I swear this is the most women empowering version of pride ever. Heck yeah. First, Lydia isn't saddled with a dirtbag for life because of a stupid mistake she made when she was young. Second, Bing moves with Jane to New York instead of asking her to stay and delay her career. Mm -hmm. And third, Lizzie choosing to be with the guy, but on her own terms and without having to work for him. Damn, this is a great show. Pemberley, you earned your Emmy. High fives to you. Yes. I mean, the Emmy was for interactive, but thank you. Mm, Masky Films 117. I love how the equivalent to Jane Austen's marriage proposals are jobs in the same city as each other. It definitely embraces the whole women in the working world. Yes, women in the working world. And also, you know, by modern standards, it would be insane for them to become engaged at this point. But it's nice to set up something that implies some kind of permanence, especially because they don't live in the same place. And starting your relationship long distance, look, people have done it, but it's hard. It will just be easier for them if they are in the same city. Christy Madrone also wondering, I can only imagine what Darcy wrote in his calendar. I bet it's just Lizzie surrounded by a bunch of hearts. Oh, read by Zoe. My face hurts from smiling and my eyes are welling with tears. I am too invested in these fictional characters' lives, but I don't care. I mean, so was I. <laughs> Moon goddess Serenity, the Bennett sisters, saying no to offers from gentlemen since 2013. <laughs> Really since 2012, because Lizzie also said no to Collins, but that's also true in Pride and Prejudice in 1813. So, okay. Wonder Space 90. Darcy's large vocabulary and complex phrasing is attractive. Yeah, some sapiosexual stuff happening here. Uh, this was a common sentiment. That moment when Darcy just raised the standards for boyfriends everywhere. LOL. I need a William Darcy in my life. Look, 
it's an unrealistic standard. You want somebody kind who respects you. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing Amanda M. Three years later, and I'm still screaming, she's playing with his tie. Kill me now. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want you to die, but I'm glad the tie play registered for people because it was a conscious choice, even if it's so graphic. It's probably less graphic than I'm making it. Maybe you just aren't picturing exactly what I'm trying to imply if you don't think it's graphic. Dorit did get it though. She did the tie thing again. Am I the only one who thinks the tie thing is hot, hot, hot? You're not the only one, Dorit. And Genesis Jordan. I can picture Charlotte editing this and just like fucking knew it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if Charlotte edited this one or if Lizzie did, but if she did give it to Charlotte to edit, like how much making out had to be taken out? We don't know. We don't know, but it messed up her hair. Did you like that choice too? We made that choice. It was fun. It was fun too because, you know, we wanted to show how much closer they were getting the intimacy that was already developing after only a week, but also it was only a week. That was as much into the future, speaking of future talk, as we were going to get to see of Lizzie and Darcy on the show. And so I think, oh, this is a Jay Bushman episode, by the way. Shout out to Jay Bushman. You'd think, oh, it's all romance. It's Kate, but it's Jay. And he did such a great job of balancing that. Like it's still new. It's still exciting. We're playing with the teasing. We don't know each other that well yet, but also how much closer we feel together. I mean, also like we did a great job acting it. Thank you. But it's a, a lovely, lovely episode and a lovely place to leave them where we see that things aren't settled by any means, but they're on a really lovely and exciting track. And I think one of the nicest places that you can leave a couple at the end of a series or movie or whatever is in a place where we've settled it enough that you know that these two are it for each other, but exactly how that plays out is something that you can continue to imagine yourself. And I'm sure there's a tremendous amount of fan fiction about it.